We begin today with one man's personal journey dealing with his traumatic brain injury, not just once, but over and over and over again. Now, experts say this kind of injury can happen when you play tackle football, soccer, ice hockey, even water polo. And it can also happen to our veterans, to victims of domestic violence and others. And they say it can lead to CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy. It's degenerative, and it is now believed to be caused by repeated blows to the head. But there are ways to prevent this from happening to our children. And while it may be too late for our first guest today, he is determined to be part of the solution for generations to come. Watch. I played six years in the NFL. I looked at myself as a performer, and that my job was to perform for the fans who paid money to come in and watch us all play. Former NFL running back Mike Adamley admits there was a physical toll for the repeated hits he sustained on the field. He played football since he was 14 years old and professionally from 1971 to 1977. We've been dizzy. We didn't know where we were for about 15 minutes. We just kind of shook our heads, went to the sidelines and, you know, did it all over again. Standing only five feet, nine inches tall, Adam Lee was up against much larger players, blocking and running at full speed. There's an old saying that the little guy has to show that he can play, and the big guy has to show or prove that he can't. After an injury sidelined him in 1977, Adam Lee left the NFL and headed to the broadcast booth. He built a successful career as the host of American Gladiators and lived an adventurous life. He became a popular sportscaster in Chicago at WMAQ. He may have even helped the Bears regain their... Then in 1999, while on the air, Adam Lee suffered a seizure. I felt this like part of my brain was, this tidal wave was coming. His general manager, who had known Mike for a long time, immediately took him to the emergency room. And he was diagnosed with epilepsy and a lesion, the uh, left temporal lobe. And um, the doctor at that time uh, said that he suspected it was due to a football injury. Adam Lee's wife says the seizures began to affect Mike's behavior. You're just going from crisis to crisis to crisis, whether it's a business decision, a lost job, a financial decision, you know, just mood to mood and never knowing how they're going to react. He fell into a deep, dark depression. I felt like I was losing him. He was physically aggressive with me, which was not like Mike at all. Their marriage fell apart. Adam Lee was spiraling out of control. It wasn't until years later they would discover the true extent of Adam Lee's condition. Mike Adam Lee and his wife Kim join me now. Thank you so much for being here. What's it like for you to watch that story put together like that, Mike? Um, I'm not embarrassed. I think that's something, that's how I lived my life. And uh, I, I've seen that before. You know, it's from the be beginning of, you know, A Block all the way to the end. Mm -hmm. You lived and, it. Yeah. What, do you remember the first moment that, you know, because we've all had moments where we forget something. Um, but do you remember the first moment that it occurred to you, this is something more serious than that? Yeah, when I, when I had the, uh, when I was doing the uh, broadcast, you know, I, I said, you know, tonight the, uh, Chicago Bulls beat the Portland Trail Blazers 96-95. Michael Jordan had 26 points. And when I was saying that, it was like I felt this like tidal wave coming over me. And half of me was talking about sports, and the other half was just this crazy stuff that going, was going on. And the next thing I knew, I was back in my office, and I took my uh, sport coat on, and I was just dripping wet. And that's when I went to uh, Northwestern Memorial Hospital and... Uh, like Kim said, I was diagnosed with this uh, lesion on my left temporal hemisphere. Uh, uh, he said most likely due to, you know, football. And then uh, you know, I took a couple of days off and took care of it and, you know, kind of lived with it for the next, I was on the air for another you know, 19 years, mm -hmm. and... Because uh, they can't diagnose CTE while a person is living. 
They can only diagnose the symptoms that are consistent with it. Right. Um, which is why, one of the reasons why so many NFL players and football players have agreed to donate their brains after death to be autopsied and researched. And in one study, they, they studied 102 NFL player brains and 101 of them had CTE. Um, it, it's, it's from repeated, it can be low impact hits over and over and over and over. When you were coming up as a kid, was this even, you know, chronic brain injury? Was that even discussed? Was that even a concern? Uh, my dad was an all-pro linebacker for the Cleveland Browns in, from 1950 through 1956. He uh, put himself through medical school and became one of the, the preeminent uh, doctors, sports physicians in the state of Ohio. And uh, He, he, he saw, uh, he, I just come from a football family, yep. you know, and uh, nobody thought about it. You're absolutely right. And it was one of the ways you were taught to, if you were running back, which I was, you know, you know, you led with your head all the time. Right. Nobody thought anything about that. Kim, do you remember, I mean, your story is remarkable because you had this marriage, it fell apart. Mm -hmm. You actually did divorce. We did. And then you remarried. We did. We did. So what, oh. we, saw, we saw in the piece some of what he was doing that helped lead to the deterioration of the marriage. What was it that brought you back to him? Um, well, it, as, as you saw in the piece, our life just was chaotic. And, and we didn't know what was going on or why. And, um, but it led to us breaking up. And we took the divorce slowly, and we were separated, um, and then divorced for a total of five years. And then there came a point where um, Mike and I remained friends, though, during this whole time. We had uh, two children still at home, and so we were always together for those things, holidays. Uh, whenever one of us needed anything, we were there for one another. And so the summer of 2014, uh, we would go and have coffee together, where our one daughter was a, a barista. And Mike started hinting, maybe I should just move in with you guys. Maybe mm -hmm. I should just move back in. I hate my place. It's, it's so depressing. And so he was dropping these hints more and more. And I knew why. It's because he was having difficulty living on his own. And so I talked to our girls. And I said, what do you think about Daddy moving back in? And we had a four-bedroom home at the time that we were renting, and they said, okay, mom, let, let's do it. And so when Mike first moved back in with us, he was in his own bedroom and bath, and then as our lives, just as we were living, um, it became apparent um, just how much he needed us. How so? Can you walk us through how, how this manifests? Because I think a lot of people look at CTE, they hear CTE, they don't fully understand what that is, yeah. or really what the actual practical ramifications are for families who have to live with it. Mm -hmm. CTE is, um, is just uh, terrible. It starts with um, the mood swings and rages and um, outbursts, um, impulsivity. And that's what we had seen that led to the breakup. By this point in 2014, um, Mike was having memory problems and um, executive functioning. And executive functioning is, is uh, necessary in everything we do. It's a part of everything we do. It's procedural knowledge. It's when to do something, how to do something, and in what order. And that's, that was one of the biggest difficulties. So every single living task that you do, where your keys are, how to use them, rinsing the dishes, making a smoothie, every little thing involves that. And so what we did is, um, as a family, is structured our lives so that Mike could devote his energy to his job and to taking care of himself, working out and doing those things, and we just did everything else. The, um Mike has an important announcement regarding his battle with the symptoms of CTE, which we're going to talk about. Plus, he has a strong message uh, for football about its man-up culture, and we'll get into that next. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there, and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. 